And that's good because I want to welcome in someone back on our show who we have before. I really enjoyed talking to Andrew Oak, who's written a couple of books here. He is specialty, <clears throat> is the First Ladies of the United States, and he's written Unusual for Their Time, uh, the First Ladies Volume 1 and 2. We've talked about that on air, but I want to get his, his impressions of Barbara Bush, who will lie in repose tomorrow with a public viewing for about 12 hours in Houston and then a private by invite only funeral. Uh, for family and friends on Saturday. Andrew, welcome back. Good morning. Always good to be here with you, Dave. Yeah, you um, you know, you've, you've chronicled all the first ladies, but in our recent memory, um, she she is really high on the list, isn't she? She really is, and I, I, I think it's because she did what is nearly impossible to do, not not with her grace, and her elegance, and that's to live such a long life in the public eye, but still have such a significant private life. And it's interesting you bring up that public and private memorial there in Houston. This personifies that. That is how this woman this woman lived her life. She had a strong public perception and public image, and an even stronger private and familial uh, image. She was the matriarch of one of the most powerful political family dynasties in American history. And everyone knew that and, and made no bones about it. And she was, she, you know, if you, if you, if you crossed her, you, you got the business end of her. But, but the majority of all the people, uh, uh got the, the, the loving, right. hugging, grandmotherly, uh, side of her that we all, that we all remember. What, um, tell me something about Barbara Bush that maybe people don't know, uh, or that well, isn't common is knowledge. Yeah, I, I think that is the fact that she's been scrapbooking since the 1940s when she started really? dating H.W. Bush. Yeah, there at, at the college station at the library, Presidential Library and Museum there, I had the privilege of going behind the scenes and being able to peruse at 10, 20, 30, 40. I mean, there must have been 60, 70 hmm. photo albums, scrapbooks on the shelves and, and in the archival boxes. And, and they're huge. And she's been adding to these over the years. And with such a large family, even outside of politics, these would be full of, of moments and memories and, and special special pictures and images and articles and, and poetry and kids' drawings and things. And, and she's just kept everything from personal and private life. And it really gives you a behind-the-scenes, intimate look at this woman who we think we know so well. You've gone back and looked at correspondence between First Ladies, and you just mentioned it through all the years with her and and George H. W. Bush, but you've gone through correspondence where they exchange letters uh, with their uh, with their future president husbands, etc. Um, it, it gives it a more. And at the time they do that, they don't know what's going to happen in the future. This is right, where you, exactly. that's the perf, that's the point I want to make is that you find out the the, the, the real human side comes out, doesn't it? One hundred percent, and and Dave, that's exactly it. Along with all these pictures in the scrapbooks, you know, the, 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 most of these first ladies and presidents have letters, and a number of them are surprisingly romantic, and not from 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 guys that you wouldn't think were this romantic. It's more the, it's more the president side because we see people like like George W. Bush, who's, who's a sweet heart of a man uh, publicly, but back when he was president, people looked at him as as kind of stiff. Uh, Richard Nixon, another one of those. Woodrow Wilson, um, going back to the the presidents that we only know from from their stoic uh, oil paintings. You, you know, when you read these romantic, these Victorian, these flowery letters from these powerful men, it's it's very surprising. The Bushes are right up there with, with every other president that was just so romantic, especially in wartime. You know, President H. W. Bush was off at war and and was shot down. Even uh, yep. there was a lot of unknown elements to to his to his uh, potential injuries or, or loss right. of life, which could have been and. And and when you know there's there's no internet there's 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 no cell phones this was the only tie to loved ones and to hear there's there's just remarkable videos out there even when when Jenna Bush interviewed her grandparents of, of President H W Bush reading letters that he wrote to Barbara Bush where he called her Barb and Barbie and the nicknames are great in these letters and he starts crying but even then Barbara Bush is kind of patting him on the leg and saying oh come on come on you don't need to cry about this pull this together yeah get she it was together such a strong force it's just an you know, amazing woman what fortitude did, did, will we ever see the likes of this again i mean the two that that obviously everybody has cited are um are abigail adams who both was a wife a first lady and mother to a president now barbara bush um will we see the likes of that again or is that just in our 
in our as we evolve, is that just more and more unlikely? You know, that, that's a that's a great question. And and Barbara Bush and H. W. Bush are, are part of a an almost lost era of bipartisanship. Uh, you know, the the parties that she threw were, were more along the lines of Dolly Madison, where it was split down the middle. You had Democrats and Republicans and people wouldn't even necessarily know which one was which as they talked through through the through the social event. And and that's where the compromise came from in in in, in knowing that, that there that there was that compromise achievable. And that's where you get people that aren't as concerned with the family name or a second term. And you just – politics is so vicious right now. I, I don't know if someone is alienated because of a name like that, as, as Jeb Bush quite possibly was. Yeah, um, that's true. Uh, or, or, or um, you know, we, we could further evolve to, to where we just go back to voting for the, the, the best – person for the job and and not think about the the political party or, or the name as much no way it's an interesting thing to think good of. luck with that one andrew that's i a, know i know well now now during the series during the c-span series i produced which went into the research for all the books and the travel uh, influence and image is the name of the series and uh barbara bush was interviewed she did a on-camera interview and she said don't you think you can find someone with a name other than Bush or Clinton? Uh, this was before Jeb threw. That's right. I remember. That. I remember but, that very yeah. famously. Yeah, that it, 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 they, it, they, she they was moved. okay. She was okay if the dynasty, family-wise, was going to go in another direction. It seemed like, and maybe thought that was appropriate. That didn't have to continue on. We don't necessarily need another president. Um, well, she certainly, though, is going to be tied to a political dynasty in the United oh, of States of America, and that part can never be changed. Barbara Bush will be laid to rest on Saturday. Andrew Oak is the author of Unusual for Their Time, Volumes 1 and 2, The First Ladies. Uh, Andrew, where can people uh, get those online? Where's the best place to go? Firstladiesman.com. I've got all my interviews, TV, radio. I hope to put this one up there. Uh, um, that's where you can get the book and see pictures and track my travels and, and check out my speaking tour uh, uh, schedule and everything. Specializing in the First Ladies here and one of the classiest ones, certainly, of our time, our generation. Uh, and very much love Barbara Bush. Andrew, always great to have you on. I appreciate very much. I know you've been busy the last couple of days. Thanks for being here today. Always time for you, Dave. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew Oak. America's he goes by First Lady's Man. That's his specialty. Uh, historian here, and he does nothing but work on the history of the First Ladies of the United States and Barbara Bush. Uh, very highly regarded there. Thirteen twenty morning. Wake up. W I L S.